Hello everyone and welcome to day number 7 of our St. Valentine's Day Massacre, the penultimate show of 2K19. Today we've got the two male semi-finals for you and then squeeze in the middle a lovely SWE Tag Team Championship match. And here we go, the <coughs> let's start that again. Here we go, we are starting things off with the first semi-final of the night, working from left to right. We have got Abdullah Kobayashi, we have got Onita, we've got Jackie Numazawa, and we have got G. Raver. This is a fatal four-way elimination extreme rules match. And only one of these four men can move forward into the finals to join our current hardcore champion, Raven and the winner of tonight's main event. Uh, the main event is Leatherface versus Bruiser Brody versus Al Snow versus Abdullah the Butcher. So it's going to be interesting no matter what happens here this evening. And then like I said, squeeze in the middle. Rick Steiner and Bron Brecker, the Steiner Generations, will take on the New Day for the SWE Tag Team Championships. Are currently... Are currently? Um... I can't talk at the moment. Right, let's start that again. I basically said two words at the same time. Now. I'm just not even sure what those two words were. Um, currently, uh, Rick Steiner and Bron Becker are the tag team champions. They won it after they won the father and son tag team tournament. They were given the opportunity and won the belts. This will be their first defense, and it's against the New Day, who got the opportunity because of winning the tag team random rumble. And this is their opportunity to walk into WWE 2K22 with the SWE Tag Team Championships in tow. Right, I'm finally starting to be able to get words out now. I do apologise. That was wrong with me. I think I'm just a mess in general, to be honest. As there's a pin here by G-Raver on... Uh, Abdullah the, the referee is so far out of place there. On Jackie Numazawa, not Abdullah the Butcher, sorry. Uh, so Anita now striking Abdullah Kobayashi, keeping him grounded. Now Anita's under the ring looking for a little bit of hard work, but gets caught with a strike in the back. And Abdullah Kobayashi with a backbreaker on the outside. I don't know why the referee is so out of position. He always is on this game, to be honest. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to get some big AI improvements for 2K22 uh, with the referees and in matches as well. I would like to see an AI improvement in standard tag team matches. And that's something we'll look at when the game does come out and we stream it. Abdullah Kobayashi with the strikes back and forth. Now taking Anita up on the shoulder, then drops him in with that air raid slam on the outside. And that could be enough for Abdullah Kobayashi to eliminate Anita. Referee is slow to get there. But there is the pin and it is enough. Abdullah Kobayashi eliminates Anita. Wow, okay. Uh, not going to lie, I sort of wanted Nita to win this one, but that's what happens when I want somebody to do something. They don't. Just typical, isn't it? It's absolutely typical. Right, so our Nita is eliminated. And Abdullah Kobayashi gets the extra points. There we go. Right then, we're down to the final three. Then we've got G-Raver, Abdullah Kobayashi, and of course, Jackie Numazawa. And it's G-Raver dropping Abdullah Kobayashi face first. That was only a one count, wasn't it? That was, that's quite amazing. That was only a one count, to be honest. Abdullah Kobayashi now trying to work over Jackie Numazawa, who comes storming in and flattens Abdullah Kobayashi. I mean, in fairness, Abdullah Kobayashi is probably a core I can create myself, as is Jackie Numazara as well. It's just a case of it's probably not going to be as accurate. Then again, these cores aren't very accurate. I mean, the G-Raver is the only G-Raver available, and as you can see, they've not done the best job in... I mean, look at the tattoo on his left arm. is dire. It's a completely different colour to the rest of his body, so they've not done a very good job of that. But then again, I can't moan, can I, really? I mean, I'm getting these cores... People are spending the time and effort making them, and I'm just using them, so. But yeah, definitely, if one of these people do win, then I'm pretty sure I should be able to um, 
create any of them, really, it's pretty easily enough. And G-Raver eliminates Kobayashi, um, who is out. And then Raver. G-Raver is getting worryingly high up the rankings. Worryingly. He's up in... He's on plus six now, which puts G-Raver up in 28th position. Well, he's actually in joint 24th. So, I mean, if he has a pretty good tournament, he could end up bloody high up, I'll tell you. If he wins here, he's going to move up to plus eight, which is going to put him up into the, the top 18. And he might just do that there with that Canadian destroyer. This is going to be it, isn't it? No, it's only a two count. G-Raver once again with Numazawa up on the shoulders, dropping him in with a gut buster. And now dropping his body weight across the leg. And now locking in that camel clutch submission. Would he tap? I can't see it, to be honest. G-Raver up on top. Waiting for Numazal to get back up to his feet. And G what the hell happened there? Wow. Okay. G-Raver still ends up on top somehow, but... And uh, gets caught out there, G-Raver. Big punches into the head. Numazawa now a G-Raver up on the shoulder. And drops him in with that Mitch and Noko style driver. Will that be enough to get him the victory? Referee again so far out of position. Nope. Still not to be enough. Jackie Numazawa drops to the outside. And here he has a ladder. Now Numazawa with G-Raver up and oh wow drops him air raid slam top of the back the neck the back of the head all drops onto the ladder and Jackie Numazawa that brutality was enough to put him through to the finals and eliminate G-Raver Numa Jackie Numazawa there he is he gets the point he gets another point and he moves up to plus seven himself now and he is the second person in that final on tomorrow's main event, alongside, of course, the current hardcore champion, Raven. There he is. Okay. That really hurt my finger. I hurt my finger at work today, and it's, it's not easy to type. It was bloody, it was horrible as well. I was carrying a piece of mesh, like metal, that it's got metal, but it's made in squares. And uh, I was carrying a couple of sheets at once, and I dropped one, and my finger got caught. It was ugh. There was a lot of blood, but I didn't. I couldn't be bothered to report it and fill the paperwork out, so I just hid it, as you do. And here we go, then, our second match of the evening, the SWE Tag Team Championship match, as Bron Brecker and Rick Steiner will defend the belts against Kofi Kingston and Big E. Of the New Day. Uh, the New Day will possibly... I don't know actually yet. Um, possibly they will free bird the championship. Rick Steiner there just clotheslines Kofi to the outside. And Bron Brecker now in with the Hurricanrana. And Bron Brecker, somebody I'm surprised didn't make it onto 2K22. Um, because he has been knocking around for a while now. Um... And it's a weird one because we do seem to have had quite a few, um, quite a few like new gimmicks. But then again, I suppose the body shape—it's just the, um, it's just the attire, isn't it? The changes, but yeah, it just seems the the two K twenty two roster just seems a bit odd. It doesn't seem very consistent. Like there's people there 
that were released like six to eight months ago, yet there's people that debuted. I mean, I, one thing I noticed earlier is Omos. I mean, Omos was at WrestleMania last year, so it's not like he's just literally debuted now. He's been in a, a high-level picture now for well over a year, and he's not even on the game, which surprises me because I believe he's someone that WWE are trying to push now. So, yeah, it does surprise me that he is not on there. Again, there's... Um, Obviously, there's DLC and that sort of stuff, but still. And then there's Commander Aziz as well, or formerly Baba Tunde, or um, what else was he? What was his other name? I can't remember what his other name was now. He had another name, I'm sure he did. When he was doing Raw Underground, he had another name, I'm sure he did. Yeah, there's many options. But yeah, it just does seem a bit odd. Uh, and again with the women's division, I mean, we've got two variations of Mia Yim, but they've taken Ronda Rousey and Lita off the game. And that's nothing against Mia Yim. I'm, I'm really happy that Mia Yim's on there. Um, but I don't understand why we've got two. <laughs> we've got one base Mia Yim, and then we've got one um, retribution Mia Yim. And, and to take the likes of... I mean, if you've got the license and the model to use Ronda Rousey. Why would you not use Ronda Rousey? That doesn't make any sense to me. She's obviously a big seller for them. She's a, a name that brings in quite a few part-time fans, if you will. Hence why she's back in a book to WrestleMania. But that's just what surprised... I mean, there's, there's quite a few surprises on there for me. It surprises me that Jake the Snake Roberts is still on there, even though he's working AEW television most weeks. And there's the tap. Bron Brecker and Rick Steiner retain the championships in what was a fairly quick and simple defense. Bron. Bron Brecker through the thunder and heat. Uh, Bron Brecker and Rick Steiner move up to plus five in the singles rankings. Uh, Kofi Kingston moves down to plus one. Big E is going to move down to plus seven in the singles rankings. Then in the tag team rankings, the New Day are going to drop down to plus three. Whereas Rick Steiner and Bron Brecker are going to move themselves up to plus six and retain the SWE Tag Team Championships of the World. And we move on to our main event to see the final entrant in the finals of our... Uh, King of the Deathmatch Tournament. The cat is very excited. And here we go then, the main event of the evening and the final semi-final in our King of the Deathmatch Tournament. We've got from left to right, Al Snow, Leatherface, Bruiser Brody and Abdullah Zibutier. Right, we are underway. We already know... That in the final is the current hardcore champion, Raven. And he will be joined by Jackie Numazawa. And it's all down to which one of these guys will uh, join as well. Uh, as you may have noticed, I have changed Leatherface. He is no longer 8 foot 27 inches or whatever. He was, he was literally the biggest you could possibly be. Um, I've actually put him down to the height that he should be based on... He's Wikipedia entry, which is like six foot one. So he doesn't quite look as menacing now, but he is menacing because of his character. I think if you ever watch any of his, um, if you ever see any of his stuff, I've got a DVD somewhere, um, and it's a Japanese DVD uh, based solely around uh, Mick Foley's matches in Japan. And that's a really good um, DVD, and it's got matches against Leatherface and stuff like that on there. And, um, yeah, he comes out, he's a bit like Chainsaw Charlie. He's swinging the, uh, the chainsaws around and scaring the audience. He's a real interesting character. I'm trying to find the website now where I brought these DVDs from. It was a bit of a weird website, to be honest. I don't think it was... Um I'm not 100% sure it was a uh, 
legit website either, to be honest with you. <laughs> now that I think about it. But it was a really cool website. Does Al Snow? No, only a two count. I do apologize if I miss it. I'm just trying to figure out what that website was called now. I mean, you don't really need to. I mean, if you go on to... Um, if you go on YouTube, you can find a lot of these matches. just spotted here. There's a, a match here between Mick Foley and uh, Terry Funk in IWA in Japan. That's knocking around somewhere. Maybe the website's been shut down. Is Abdullah the Butcher gone? I think Bruiser Brody's just eliminated Abdullah the Butcher, you know. I believe he has. And almost getting another elimination there as well. Who's up? Brody. Uh, Abdullah the Butcher has been eliminated. Abdullah the Butcher has been eliminated. Was it high? It wasn't high spots. I'm sure it wasn't. It might have been, though. The website had loads of, like, custom DVDs, and they were really cool. Um, well, maybe. Maybe it was... Um, High spots, I just didn't realise. Maybe, I don't know. I think it was high spots, you know, because looking at it... Yeah, they've got Best of the Steiner Brothers in Japan, Best of Anita in Japan, Best of Hogan in Japan, Best of Scott Hall, Best of British Bulldogs, Best of Jimmy Snooker. All these um, Japanese specials. As Leatherface going for the pin now on Al Snow. Nope, not quite enough. See, that's something I was looking for. Greatest matches ever DVDs. So basically, I think they're just using Meltzer's um, ranking system to... Uh... Oh, Al Snow is gone. I didn't pay attention. I didn't pay attention to who eliminated Al Snow. But either way, we'll figure it out at the end. Um, this DVD looks amazing, though. I mean, it is all Japanese wrestling. Barbed wire, board, spiked nail, death match. Toshiaki Kawada versus Kenta Kobashi. Kenta Kobashi versus Takeo Mori. Jiyashiru Tenryu. I can't pronounce these names versus Kawada. They're just some fantastic matches, yeah. Big swing here by Bruiser Brody on Leatherface. Now drops into the pin. And, oh, I thought he had it then again. I thought he had it again there for a sec. And Leatherface now. Oh, in with a takedown. Brutal. And there's the pin for the one, two, only a two count. Leatherface with the boots right across the sign. The sign? The back, the spine is supposed to be. That's what it was. I'll get there eventually, I promise. My brain will eventually work. Rosa Brody, though, working him back over. Leatherface with a big elbow in the face of Bruiser Brody. Now has that claw... In with that big choke slam. That's what got him all the way here. Will it be enough to get them through to the next round? It freaking well is as well. Leatherface moves into the final of the deathmatch. The king of the deathmatch tournament. Wow, okay. 
So there we go. Raven versus Jackie Numazawa versus Leatherface to be crowned the king of the deathmatch and the SWE Hardcore Champion tomorrow. And Le uh, Leatherface got that elimination as well, didn't he? Yeah, okay. Well, at least I know. So, Leatherface with two more eliminations and the win. And then Bruiser Brody with the loss. Okay, there we go. Right, that's it for tonight. Then I hope you've enjoyed. Of course, if you have, hit the like, the subscribe, or the other good stuff. And I will see you again tomorrow for our final episode of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. And potentially our final episode on 2K19. However, I do feel like we'll pop back just for the use of cause anyway. But we'll see how it goes. Good night.